Hello and welcome to a quick video on getting started with Google Colab. So this is just a quick getting started designed for students of MS365 or anyone that happens to have fumbled across my YouTube channel and needed something interesting to do for the day. So no matter who you are, welcome. Uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Google Colab and how we're going to use it in class. Uh, so let's talk about what that is. So, so far we've learned a little bit about Python. We've learned that you have to have Python installed on your system and you have to have something to interpret the code that you, you write in Python. And that's usually done through some kind of IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Now in the world of data science, uh, Jupyter Notebook is by far the most popular solution. Uh, and we're going to use that in this class, even though it's not really a true data science class. Uh, but it's not the only solution out there, okay? So now the cool thing about Google Colab is that Google Colab will run a cloud-based version of Jupyter Notebook, which means you don't have to use the resources of your computer. You don't have to have a GPU to do more intense training. It even gives you access to tensor processing units, a TPU, um, that's just a, a little bit more powerful. That's just really something cool that you can leverage as you explore and learn uh, in this world of Python, machine learning, data science, and so on. So what I want to do is just take a few minutes and show you how you can get started working with this and what you'll need to set up to be functional in MS365 or really anybody else that, that just wants to get started working with Google Colab. But if you were in my class, you need to do these next steps if you have not already. So the thing that's great about Google Colab is that it is cloud-based, but because of that, you need to also store the data that you're going to work with, including your notebook files on Google Drive. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're first gonna log into Google Drive, then from there, we're gonna launch a Google Notebook that we have saved in a folder that we are going to create. Okay, now if you don't, or if you've never used Google Drive before, you do have to have a Google account. If you're a student with my university, our university has already got that set up, so all you need to do is use your university credentials to log in. If you've not done that, or if you're just watching this video for your own well-being, then you will need to set up an account with Google in order to access Google Drive. So what we're gonna first do is we're going to open up a web browser, and we are gonna go to drive.google.com okay so now once we get to drive.google.com now i was already logged in but you would need to log in if you haven't done so already what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a folder now i've got some other stuff kind of floating around in here but for you guys you may not have anything so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to new and folder and you're going to create a folder called ms365 this folder is gonna be where everything that you do with class is gonna be stored. The safest thing you can do is to save everything. Save all your data, save all of your notebooks, save all of your notes, save all of your files in this Google Drive folder at the end of every class. So by doing that, it's gonna be backed up in the cloud. You're not gonna to have to worry about having it on your local machine. If something odd happens and you lose a file, you should be able to go back and retrieve it. It's just really a great solution all the way around. So I strongly suggest you take this step, okay? So from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up that MS365 folder and we are gonna right click and go to more and select Google Collaboratory. Now, before I continue, let me warn you that I've already installed Google Collaboratory here. If this is the first time you're doing this, when you go to more, you won't have Google Collab as an option here. So what you're gonna wanna do is go just a little step farther down, go to connect more apps. When you get to connect more apps, you're gonna actually wanna search in the Google Marketplace for Collab, it'll pop right up, and you're gonna to wanna to then install that right here. Now notice mine's already installed, which is why it popped up for me, okay? If you've not done this step, this is the first time you're doing it, you're gonna to wanna to install first. Once you install, you'll then see if I right click and go to more, I can then create a Google uh, Colab notebook directly from my Google Drive. So I don't even have to open up Google Colab, I can just create it directly from here. Now you can go to Google Colab, just the actual login uh, for Google Colab and start from there, but it may be easier to start from here depending on what it is you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this Google Colab. 
and it's gonna open up Google Colab with a brand new notebook right inside of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is rename this notebook. So I'm gonna jump up here, and in honor of every person that's ever gotten into any programming in the world, I'm gonna call this Hello World. It's always the very first thing we do, okay? So let's get acclimated a little bit with Google Colab and what you can do. So the first thing we're gonna do is when we save this, uh, this is gonna save back to our Google Drive. So as long as I've got that Google Drive, see that? There's the Hello World file right there. That's just gonna be there as long as I continue to save. It's in the cloud, it's safe and sound. It's a beautiful thing. I can run this from a variety of things because it's running out of your web browser. So the first thing you wanna know about Google uh, Google Code, uh, Colab, specifically Jupyter Notebooks overall, um, is that it runs, it interprets Python code line by line, and not every IDE does that, okay? So when I say line by line, so if I pop here and I do something like print, hello world. So when I do that, I have to execute this first line and it's gonna think, 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 and then eventually it's gonna print the words, hello world. Google Drive's running, or excuse me, not Google Drive, but Google Colab's running pretty slow today, so apologize for that, but eventually it's gonna think about it, and it will say underneath here, hello world, just like so, okay? Now, what's different from this is, say I wanted to do a couple other things. Say I wanted to get creative with, with what I'm doing. Um, if I have, uh, say, two plus two, just basic math, I'd have to execute that. If I have something like, um, oh, two times two, well, I'd have to execute that, okay? So note that every time I enter in some type of line, some type of code, and this is just basic math, I have to run that specific cell in order to get it to run. So in many ways, think of a line in Jupyter Notebook like a singular cell inside Excel. Not every IDE works like that. So let me show you a different option. We won't use this option in class, but I just wanna show you the difference. One of the, one of the cool things that helps with specifically data science work or data analytics work inside Jupyter. So let me switch to a different IDE. This is Spider. Um, Spider IDE gives you the ability to directly enter Python. Um, but when it executes, notice even though I've got lines over here, as I go through, you'll see a line, one, two, three, four. When I execute that line, it's just gonna run the entire thing, kind of like a script, just all at once, right down here in the console. So say, for example, I do something like um, print, uh, and we get more creative, right? So let's go, do, 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 oh, sorry, let's do this. Okay, so when I hit return, Notice that it didn't do anything. It didn't run anything down here yet. So I've got a, a line that says print, and this is just gonna be all asterisks. If you're brand new to Python, you've never seen this before, don't worry about what print does. I will walk you through that in the next video. For now, I just want you to see the difference uh, with Jupyter versus Spider and they both have their own place. So notice, I've got three lines, right? One, two, three. Um, and when I've hit return, they're not actually running. I actually have to go up here and I go run, see that? You'll see run file. And when I do, it actually executed down here and it executed all three lines at the same time. Now, if I was working in Jupyter, that wouldn't work. I would have to run each cell at once. So now you're probably asking yourself, well, is it better to work in Jupyter versus Spider? And the answer is it really depends. It depends on what you're doing. The reason that Jupyter is so helpful for data science is you've got a lot of exploratory data analysis you're doing. You're doing a lot of different calculations. Maybe you wanna see one calculation before you do something else. Maybe you wanna perform a data transformation or shape data before you do something else. Maybe you wanna sort your data. You wanna drop a column in your data. You wanna filter your data. You wanna group your data. All of these different things can be done one by one. Uh, instead of being being run all at once, which is super, super helpful, okay? So a couple things you wanna look at while we're in here working in Jupyter Notebook. So the first of all is that uh, if I don't like a line that I've written, if I don't like a cell or if I've got a cell that I don't need, I can simply delete it. So if I go over here and go to delete, that's just gonna go away. Delete, delete, and I'm back to my original hello world, okay? If I want to add a cell to my Jupyter Notebook, I'm gonna pop up here to code, 
and I'm going to add a cell like so. I can do anything I want in that cell. So if I want to enter in a comment, I can. And when I execute that comment, notice it didn't do anything. That's something for the next video. We'll talk about comments, but I can go in and do that. Uh, if I want to go in and add something more like text, I can type directly into a text box like so. And as I run that text, Notice that this is just simply something, it's not part of the code, it's like something you can use to annotate the document. So uh, you'll see as we move forward, move forward with this class a little bit more, that I'll use things like these text boxes as just little notes to you. So it's not part of the code, it's not something that will execute, it's simply something that uh, when you go through and work with it, it just gives you the ability to to, to write a note inside the Jupyter Notebook. So it's not part of the code, it's not something that's interpreted, it's not something that runs, it's just annotation for you, okay? Not, not even a Python comment, it's literally just words that you can put in here to use it sort of like a true notebook for yourself. So I have the ability to go in and do that, okay? I can delete those, just like I can delete individual cells inside my, my document. Okay. And at the end of each cell, notice that I can either create a new line of code or a new cell, right, this way, or I can add a new text cell this way. Uh, I have the ability to move the orientation. So say, for example, I wanted to comment, to add a comment to this document before I start writing my, my code. Um, I can move this line up. I can move this line down. I can move them all around. Okay. I can move those all around as I see fit. Okay. Like so. Alrighty. So when you're done, there's a couple different things that you have you can do. So first thing is I can go in and I can save. And because it's just a notebook all on its own, there's no additional data that I'm working with, then that is just gonna go right back to my Google Drive and I am all said and done. Now what makes this more interesting is if you've got a data set that you need to connect to, if it's something that you need to read data into your Jupyter Notebook. Okay. In order to do that, you would need to do that by mounting your Google Drive. Okay. Uh, and I will show you how to do that. So if I go over here to my left, you see I've got an option here that says files. And when I click that, it gives me an option of files that are here. Now I haven't mounted my Google Drive yet, but if I click Google Drive, it's going to say, hey, do you want to let this notebook directly access your Google Drive? I do. So when I click connect to Google Drive like so, once I do that, it's gonna think for a minute. It's gonna actually mount your Google Drive just right over here to the left. It may take a minute depending on how much data is in your Google Drive. But when I do, notice now I have access to my Google Drive and anything that's on that drive is gonna show up as files that I then have the ability to link to, okay? Uh, so there's my 365 file, for example. So if I go to that file, if I had data in it, which I don't, um, I could actually use something like pandas to read that data into this data frame, or excuse me, into this Jupyter Notebook, and I could then manipulate that uh, in several different ways. And we will do that in the next video. For now, I just wanted to get you started with just learning a little bit about Jupyter Notebooks in Google Colab, uh, how that works, setting up your file folder for MS365, uh, and just understanding the difference between spider ID and Jupyter Notebook, right? Meaning that it executes or it interprets lines line by line, cells line by line, versus running all of your lines all at once. So with that, friends, I hope I helped you. If I did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe as all those young people say. And you know, if you're one of my students, you can always email me if you have questions and I'm open for requests too. So I hope to drop a few more videos in the next couple days. I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow. Have a happy, safe day and we will talk to you soon soon.